Well, we're still here in Cambridge. Um, just got done with the Harriet Tubman site. As bonus footage, I thought I'd take you to Spokot Windmill and check out a windmill. So follow me as we check out a windmill. Spokot Windmill and Village. Go check out this historic sign before we check out these buildings in the windmill. Here's the historical marker, Spokot Windmill. This windmill is a typical of the grist post mills used in the 18th and 19th centuries for grinding grain. Such a windmill built here about 1850 by John A. L. Radcliffe was blown down in the blizzard of 1888. In 1972, it was reconstructed using the original grinding stones and internal steps. All right, there's the village and the windmill. Let's go check her out. Now, unfortunately, these aren't open, so, but at least we get to see the windmill. Castle Haven School. Colonial Tenant House, circa 1800s. Let's read a sign on how a post windmill works. The earliest mills like the Spokot windmill were post mills in which the entire mill housing pivots on a central post. Dorchester also had a tower. Smock mills in which only the building cap rotated into the wind. Every major farming area had a mill for grinding grain into meal which was used for breads and for baking. Step 1. The steps act as an anchor and after raising them, the entire mill can be turned by pushing the wheel at the end of the long tail pull. Two, three halyards are used to raise a sail on each blade, much like raising a sail on a sailboat. Step three, when the wind turns the blades, the main shaft also rotates turning the large tooth gear inside. Step four, as it rotates, the tooth gear turns another gear that is connected to the upper of the two large millstones. And the final step, step five, grain is fed into the two stones to be ground into meal. The distance between the two stones can be adjusted to change the coarseness of the meal.